Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Dickensia, also known as Deck Nabbit. Here we are on my free to play alt account. I am rank 59, almost, almost 60. Because I'm milestone. I let's see if I can show you. I just finished week three, entering week four. Um I wanted to record a bit earlier, but I wanted to wait a bit because there's a big update this week. And let's just hop into it. So I had a few questions about the Moonlight Heroes thing. Um, can I actually pull up a list here? Uh, something I could just pull up an entire list of all the heroes. But of these, I think the ones I'd recommend are my personal like a hundred percent recommendation. I would say C Lilius by far is like the most wanted. She's the most flexible, she's good in PvP, she's useful in PvE, very, oh sorry, very specifically, she's abusable in certain PvE modes like all of Trials, for fishing for maximum score, and her buffing is great, and then of course in PvP, if you got the gear, she's really good. Um, a Ravi is one generally people recommend. And this is all all within regard to like you chose Spectre Tenebria as your your free unit. If you don't have her and you didn't pick her, just just take Spectre Tenebria to make your life easier if you care. Otherwise, pick who you like. Uh, these recommendations are just to help. Uh, Apocalypse Robbie here is pretty solid. She's probably gonna take a big dip in PvP um, after the the artifact update that's coming up because she's losing basically. Her alternative, she's down to like one, I guess maybe two if you're going to be cheesy about a shoes artifact. But for the most part, she's just going to run Proof of Valor from this point on. So you pretty much know her build. Um, and she's going to be like CC locked in a debuff heavy meta, I guess. But for the most part, in story, she's really solid. Like, she's an anchor. If anything can kill her in story, and she's properly geared, I'm kind of scared for your team. Aside from that, like, Bellion's always okay, she's solid for PvP, and in the mo for the most part she, like, scares people away from attacking your defense. Um, everyone else is kind of a bonus, I can't really think of any other standouts. Uh, da -da. and of course keep up with your events. And, oh yeah, and it is today is the Lunar New Year, as I am recording this, so happy Lunar New Year. Hope everyone's starting off their... Well, Lunar New Year, regular New Year. I hope everyone's starting their year off well. Um, so by this point, ideally you should have been able to farm Wyvern to finish the challenge. I have started the Golem one. This one was kind of on it. I, I kind of just clicked it on accident, but I remembered it's on the Adventurer's Path, so this is a fine order to me. Vivian is definitely way more useful than Sermia, but might as well try it to finish the Adventurer's Path. Um, it eventually leads you down to, like, doing expedition and crafting and then doing higher levels of golem, which is fine. Today's the hunt event. I would have liked to finish, um, clearing earlier. So I just finished episode two when I got time because of a huge patch update. So let's talk about that one. So this huge update reworked unrecorded history and side story. So in the side story, depending on your progression of the main story you can now target a side story that has that features a character that showed up in the, in the main storyline at that point so any of these characters i can go to an event go to their map they're boosted here i get all of these rewards from their store and honestly you don't even have to care about fully clearing them it's not a big deal and then yeah as soon as we clear it or at least enough, it gives us this book. This book lets us do a one week drop rate up banner like this. And your first one is free. So I still have mine. This is the first time it's available. This one is free. I have a week. I chose Tamarin because Tamarin is the goddess of PvE. And she does everything needed. Like She's on all of these things. This is how popular she is. Like... <laughs> 
I'm honestly shocked she's used for everything here, but to be fair, I guess Blue Mink Snaglitch, like, if you don't want to make Hazel or use a Bloodstone, you'll use her. But yeah, she's literally the goddess of PvE. And just as a reminder, if you're summoning, never summon with less than 605 bookmarks or at least enough Skystones to make that up. Uh, if you need Stigma, you can always buy a 10-pack at a time with your Skystones, but it's more efficient to buy from Garo over here. They'll sometimes have it. You just refresh and buy of gold if you have the gold to spare, of course. Um, so let's talk about recommendations really quick from Side Story before we move on. So of course, Tamrin. If you didn't re-roll for Iceria, or if you wanna, if you're making a new account or looking to start playing, and you start with this episode for some reason, Iceria is now in here. So we get Tamrin week one, get Iceria week two. You're all set. Uh, other recommendations, Vildred is honestly back on the table. It's not a huge investment for him. Uh, he's pretty good for clearing story, side story. He's good for Labyrinth in the beginning, like lower level Labyrinth. He's good for... He's good for uh, Ozymonic and Banshee, I would say, to an extent. Mostly Ozymonic. But he's also good for Blooming Snaglitch Expedition. He's one of the like easier to obtain DPS for that one until later. So Vildred is good. Charles, I don't really recommend. He's more of um, a mid late game kind of unit. He's kind of been replaced in PvP outside of mild showings here or there by Shu. I ironically, he counters Shu, I guess. <laughs> for the most part, he's just there. And then he's used for like one shots one-shot teams in Banshee and Ozymonic because his AoE is nuts and he gives attack up and then does some damage. Crow is like... They just gave him an extra equip. I don't really know why. Like, Crow is still usable. Maybe not in RTA to an extent, but like... He's still one of the top PvE arenas. Like, regular arena, Guild War, he's still like a top-tier unit in those niches. And I, I would still get him eventually. I, this account luckily got him from the free bookmarks. But he's an okay one. Definitely like a solid like second tier level pick after. So Tama and Asaria. I like S tier. Vildred's maybe like an A or a B. Charles is like a, a D. Crow is probably like A or B. Basar is like a mage that... He's mostly PvP. He pushes back and has debuffs kind of hard to gear because he's a mage and or at least his base speed's kind of slow bizarre is probably in that charles range like a d tier kisei is like a super high gear requirement speed assassin kind of player she's honestly really fast and with her extra equip but she's not that great probably like b or c tier especially in this meta probably lower i win I feel really bad because he's one of my first five stars, but he's absolutely, like, been replaced and not useful. <laughs> like, I really don't know where he's he's used, but, like, he has, like, a, a push-up that does... He buffs, he has defense break, but for the most part, like, I'm pretty sure Flan's available in one of these, and Flan is a straight upgrade to him, has lower gear requirements, is a better class, and because her defense break is not an attack, it doesn't have, like, elemental disadvantage. And then, of course, Sermia is free. Only do this if you really want her materials and if you want to, like, imprint Lionheart Sermia, I guess. Bologna is definitely, like, an A or B tier recommendation. I'm thinking about doing her soon because she's, I'm on, like, Abyss 62, and this is, like, the first major roadblock because now I can't just use all my units to have debuffs. I need some strong DPS, preferably an Earth one, and Bologna is, like, the premier Earth DPS. She has, like, built-in Daydream Joker percent max health level damage. Ugh, percent max health Daydream Joker level damage, sorry. And she just does a lot. She's good for Banshee, she's good for Ozymonic, she's good for Abyss, or, and she's good for Labyrinth. I would assume she's okay for uh, Expedition. I never really tried her because I had all the units to play with. Charlotte is another one that's okay for uh, Labyrinth. She's kind of a good counter pick in PvP for the most part. 
I don't think she has much other use. Like, she's probably okay for Golem. Um, that's really it. Charlotte's probably, like, a B or C tier pickup. Like, these are all, like, early pickups. Like, tier rankings. Like, tier rankings for later on. Like, she's probably closer to A. But I think she's, like, a B tier here. Lona's, like, A. Selene is 100% a PvP unit. Like, you, you will basically never use her in PvE outside of when you can. <laughs> <laughs> because she she reacts to non-skill attacks, she just nukes one unit and follows up, and like she just hits really hard. So in contained PvP, she that's where she shines. So as a new player, probably like a C or a D. Um, Chloe is specifically for Wyvern and like the weird 100% one shots I use for other hunts. So she's a 100% a late game unit. I do not think she's that great early game. And her gear investment is eh. Like you get Sigrid for free. And you get Alexa for free. <laughs> like I can't honestly recommend Chloe unless you just like her. So she's probably a D. Melissa's a really cool PvP unit. Not much use from PvE. I think there's like one or two off the top of my head. Um, So probably a D. Haste, unfortunately, after their buff, he's still not that good. So probably a D. Maybe, like, even with the gear, I, I think he's a D. He's only used... He's like, we have Ran at home, Fire, and Slower. Uh, Destina is definitely, like, one of the premier cleansers in PvP right now. And she's a reviver, has some decent healing, can push up your team, or push up one unit at a time with her S2 extra equip. Um... Honestly, I don't think she's worth pulling early. At least for Soul Leavers, I have a third one, another one in mind that's way more important. Um, because you'll have Tamarin and Montmo already, and probably Angelica if you care. Maybe you pulled Akadis too, and she's really good. I didn't even do this one. I, I didn't realize that despite this first week, I would lose this side story. <laughs> Can I replay it? Yeah, I can replay. Okay. I I didn't do this one, so I, at least I don't remember clearing it. But maybe I did. I I lost that one if I if I switch now, but I'll find out in like three days. There's nothing free here. But yeah. So episode one. Isaria, Tama, and then the next tier is like Vildred, Bologna, and then the next tier is like Destina, Proud. And then everyone else, I think, is fair. Episode 2, Violet's for the most part a PvP unit. He's just really annoying. Can kind of 1v4 on certain modes or matchups. But PvE usage is kind of limited. Kaorik is 100% a PvP unit. I don't think there's anything I've actually used him for in PvE. He's a high speed damaging mage, like assassin mage kind of play. Uh, Vivian you get for free, but imprints on Vivian's imprints are honestly really strong, so she's not bad. Uh, Lilica is actually a really good debuffer in PvE and a good supporter. So maybe. Lilius is a really good tank because she just spams dual attacks over S1. She has a cleanse for your whole team. She's pretty solid. Lilibet is only used in Ancient Inheritance and PvP as far as I can think of, and the Ancient Inheritance thing feels like a multi-level marketing scheme to me. I've been, I've been trying it, but eh. Ray is like a late-game cleanser. Elena is also like a late-game cleanser. Pavel is like a late-game DPSer for like... Um, Banshee one-shot is his most popular one, but for the most part he's... Uh, a PvP unit. Rona is the other Soul Weaver I was talking about. Her passive, her S2, makes it so any type of follow attack or extra attack, so counters, extra attacks, dual attacks, all of those will heal you and give you a combat readiness push every time it hits your team. And the healing scales based on how many units are hit. So the amount of counters you're going to run into in PvE and PvP she just single-handedly like makes them a non-factor and she can give you a revive like she's not as strong as destino revival wise because hers is a buff and you could lose it and you can't just use it reactively but rona is definitely my pick here 
you get Kana for free, and I don't think her imprints are that great. Uh, let's see. Euphine has been reworked. If you have like a free four hours every time to go into Labyrinth to make an immortal Euphine for coin farming, be my guess. But for the most part, she's just used for like uh, a one shot or like a one shotting cleave unit with Zio right now in PvP. So she's solid for later. And then Cecilia, easily the like best knight, I think, out of the, the whole side story availability. Like, you get a lot of good ones for free, or at least three stars, like... Like, Ross, of course, is good. Clary is good. Arrowell's good. Pillis is good. But Cecilia is, like, the PvE tank later. She gives everyone immunity, gives them all barriers, taunts so they hit her. She gives... With her extra equip, she strips the buffs from enemies, gives them attack down and speed down, and then gives them defense break on her S1. And if they have attack down, her defense break chance goes up. She has literally everything you could ask for in PvE anywhere she's applicable. So in episode 2, I think S tier is 100% Rona. And then followed by A tier would be Cecilia, um, Lilica, and then Lilius. And then B tier would be like the, the premier PvP units like Euphine's okay. Pavel's okay, Violet's okay, and then everyone else after them. Episode 3, Shu is currently PvP meta. Takes quite a bit of gear, I'll be honest. Like, she needs a lot of health to work. Uh, but for the most part, she's pretty good and she's used late game in Labyrinth. Episode 3 and 4 are noticeably harder than 2. So by then, you guys will probably be like mid-late game. Mid, well... Probably early mid to early late game. Unless you're lazy. Ervalyn is... Honestly, Ervalyn's kind of like a super rare unit to see. He's kind of usable for Banshee and PvP. Like, he kind of does like tank busting. But PvE, a lot of people like to use the Rat. the might. I think it's the Mighty Scout for Banshee. Or just like Viking, whose lower gear requirements are Ram. Stuff like that. PvP, he's probably okay for tank busting. I know Hua Young after her nerf is still probably better. And for tank busting, you usually can't just rely on like the one unit that just nukes them if they can't do anything else right now. Especially in this control meta. Flan is probably one of the the units the best units for like lowering gear requirements for one shots. He has defense break and she has a CR push on S2. That gives crit damage and attack up, so that lowers all of your gear requirements. Yelenov, I, I specifically use for my one-shot comps because she gives crit damage up and nothing else. I mean, like, her AoE is kind of nice, but I don't really care about it. Mort is a very niche PvP unit. And then Euphine's here again. <laughs> and then Senya is a really strong PvP unit right now. Kind of high gear investment needed to make her really perform. Not really much use in PvE outside of one expedition. She's actually not a bad bait for that one. I'm kind of considering building her for that to see what it's like. This account, I don't plan on doing my 100% clear team, so I'll invest around here and there. Valencia, oh, one moment. Alright, sorry about that. Just had someone at the door. But yeah, um, Alencia. Alencia is honestly a really fun unit. I enjoy a lot about her kit. She has defense break. A follow attack, uh, up attack, and injury on her S1 because of the buff from S2. And then she has um, a strips all buffs on S3. That's AoE, gives her defense up. She's a counter to everything in the meta, kind of. Like, she's good against DN, good against Shu, good against Senya, or at least old meta, I guess, before the Ranger stealth meta, debuff meta we're in now. She's a good counter pick into Senya, Shu, A Robbie in particular. Uh, really fun, not really great in PvE, pretty cool overall. Ida is probably one of the best. I think they're... I may, I may be wrong because I'm not a Cleave player, but I, play, I believe she fills the, like, bridge roll. So it's like, you AoE with, like, Ron, and then Caesarea pushes you guys up. Ida follows in to cut and do AoE damage, and then they finish. 
He does pretty good as an AoE cleaver. Ron is, of course, probably... I think, like, when Cleave is in, Ron's probably the best opener. Like, if you have Book available for 20 souls, you just S2 for attack up, and then you S3 with Soul Burn to guarantee applying Stigma and defense break to everything, and does big AoE damage. Um, so, of course, with Cleaving in general, like, you need high speed. Ron has a high base speed and does need a bit of damage if you want him to pop off. So, the episode 3 is probably when you first run into, like, the first batch of mainly PvP units. Uh, the only real PvE unit in here is, like, Flan, and then to a lesser extent, Herbalin. Um, Shu is pretty good for specifically one Nightmare Raid boss. And then, I guess, Ilinov, until they... Buffer reworker, she's kind of usable as like a crit damage buff in PvE, but that's really it. Everyone else is just pick who you, you think is fun. Like if you're going to be a Banshee or Wyvern farmer kind of decision. And then of course episode 4, this is the hardest episode, it's our current one. Uh, you'll get Aiden, this one, for free as a 3 star. All 4 of her elements al unlock over the course of the chapter. Young used to be like the queen of everything, and then they broke her... Well, she already doesn't have, well, spoiler, she doesn't have working or great arms. And now they theoretically, or, quote, broke her legs for PvP. She's still really good at one-shotting tanks. But that's all she does. Like, her S1 hits like a wet noodle. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. She just, she's more one and done now. I feel like I use her very rarely. And... Some Senyas don't have enough HP, unless you get like a really low HP, like Hua Young to actually kill. Aside from that, she's okay. She used to be like, god tier until that nerf. Uh, Para is probably one of the better cleave openers too. She's really good with high speed. Has like uh, an interesting redirect mechanic combined with her stealth and giant barrier. She was... <clears throat> Pretty much the, the unit barrier inversion was designed to destroy. It could one-shot most Paras. Um, and then Arya's really come into like her own niche in PvP as like the premier counter unit. So like she stealths her allies and then everyone has to hit her. <clears throat> and eventually she'll hit two units on her counterattack and eventually do a massive AoE one with her S2. Um more of like a, a mid speed the low speed team now like she's usually like 160 180 ish on lifesteal and effective resist so they don't like strip her buffs because she doesn't have a natural counter it's a counter buff so she is still vulnerable kind of like Senya to being stripped but yeah she's popping off recently especially in guild war uh tayo the unit designs and to counter Peira with Hua Young in Guild War, but he never got ignore effect resist, and the stat investment for him is really high to be like mid tier. I've seen maybe one Tayo ever that like did their job properly, or at least did something surprising. So I don't know really much about countering him, but yeah. And yes, he is an ice unit if his design didn't give it away. Uh, Zahak is probably the, the, like, rising star of this generation. Has massive injury on S3, can crit Shu and Senya through all of their mechanics because of the, the way crit bonus works on his S1 and S3. Um, really fast. The new extra equip that lets him put attack up. Oh, yeah, new extra equip that lets his S2 put attack up and CR push someone else. Oh, he just... It's a great, like, single-target nuke bridge kind of unit. Or he can even be your opener, I guess. And then Yolha. Everyone thought she'd be useless. Oh, sorry. Everyone thought she'd be useless after the Hua Young nerf because we can't see her in defense anymore. But as it turns out, you know, uh, when you give Krau's kit to a unit, but make it better, because now she has healing if she kills a unit. Like, Krau doesn't heal when he has threes. He gets a giant barrier. 
But when you'll hold out S3s and kill something, she heals. And then, uh, unlike Crow, she's really, she doesn't care about debuffs. Because if you drop her to that threshold, she cleanses everything, gives herself a barrier, and pushes herself up. So Crow can get permanently locked down. But if you don't have the right cycle, Yulha's going to get that nuke off. And then, of course, Redirected Provoke is arguably better than Provoke. You know, it's guaranteed to go to the highest health. Um, so she's surprisingly good, despite not having as much usage in Guild War. And then Sharoon, uh, she was like the introductory of Venom, which is like super poison with injury. She's kind of okay. Um, I'd say she's kind of hard to use for the most part as a very niche case. I know there's some top Guild War player that uses like Sharoon Fighter Maya Rona to counter every single Shu Senyo team on defense because they just kill them over like 10 minutes or something. And then Lua, the, the current disaster, I guess, of the meta. She literally does everything you can want to know an opener. She gets, she's fast. She's a ranger, so she has ac access to Guiding Light, which stealths you on every turn, or 80% ch chance to stealth you, sorry. So she opens, and she's safe from Zeo. Um, her S2, I believe, is the one that puts one unit to strips one unit of their buffs and puts them to sleep. And then S3 is a non-attack skill that just strips everyone's, like, what is it, one buff from everyone, and then... Sets their cooldowns down by one. Like, it's kind of nuts how strong she actually is. And, yeah, so this is mainly a PvP uh, episode as well. You should be definitely, like, mid-late game by now. Or at least early-late game. And every unit in here except Tayo and Sharoon I could probably recommend. Like, Para's kind of fallen off, but Para's still good when you can find her. While young, I I also probably will bump her down a bit. Like, there's a lot of units I'd much rather use against tanks. Like, Strauze may be a Moonlight unit, but he's definitely way better. And then Zahak is arguably better. Yulha's better. Um, Death Dealer Ray just came out. He's probably better. I'd rather use, like, D Dark Corvus and a bunch of other things. Or just, like, chip away at tanks. You don't really care anymore. You don't need to one-tap. Like, when she... One tapped and like two turns later did it again. Like she could kill any unit in the game. She was top tier. But now that she can only kill tanks, she's not worth it. So like Lua for the spa the speed farmers, Yolha for everyone, Zahak for everyone, Arya's probably good for everyone, Paras for the speed farmers. Yeah, that's it for side story. Now remember when you pull, make sure you have six hundred and five bookmarks. Or at least enough Sky Stones to get to Pity, which is 120. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of people who have like ranked what characters to look out for in the Rated Up. I, I don't really plan on doing that unless someone asks. Uh, Arena. As I said, like you just keep doing it. Get points. Um, today was actually the first day I've been attacked this whole week, so I actually had to attack back. But for the most part, um, as long as you keep attacking NPC and then, like, constantly retrying against one, you'll still earn your passive crests. But I think, like, how active you are in the actual ladder is how active people will attack you. After, like, the first two weeks or so of surviving, it kind of resets and no one really hits you. Um, so Masters is where I float. I don't really have any units to fight up. Uh, at 60, you'll not real-time arena um so the season ending just got announced for us as of this recording like last week so it's like first week of february uh i think decay is three days I should say it's somewhere here uh here for gold it's seven days for masters and above it's three you need to hit masters and above if you want the skin of the season um so wow, I can even if I I don't even care. Like I'm I'm just gonna this account. I'll just do my ten placements, which I recommend everyone doing because you just get a lot of PVP crests. And if you somehow manage to get higher, like hey, it's more crests, and then you get the skin if you get even higher to masters. Like I guarantee you, if you were farming, you'd get it. And then I didn't realize this, but this is still going on. I thought this was um 
I thought this was just for whatever the world championship, but hey, a ring until May? I'll take it. Okay, so let's see, I've gone over side story, I've gone over PvP goals, I've gone a bit over the hunt stuff. Um, the adventure, I'm actually gonna, well, this, we have an event going on, so I'll probably dive into adventure when it switches over. See how far I can get with literally just Tama Seria combo. I'm not too worried. Um, specialty changes are in. We we went over that last time. Uh, I guess the new unrecorded history is something to talk about. So they made it so it's just 33 maps on one. So you can actually get all the Ross and Mercedes imprints again. So I, I don't actually know what to do with the extra ones. I mean, people are like, oh, maybe we'll get an, an ML Ross eventually <laughs> or something. I'm like, all right, three free imprints, I guess. Or the Mercedes ones, though, or Mercedes. Uh, I don't actually know. How they We just call her Meru, but you can use those for her Moonlight counterpart, the Celestial Mercedes. Um, the Archdemon version has their own thing from Golden Transmits, so it's whatever. You can clear this at your own pace, get all the rewards again. I did, I mean, if you watched the other videos, you should have known. Like, I told you to clear it out before the new version came out. You do get the double different rewards. Uh, just a brief touch on that. Expedition-wise, uh, I think Blooming Snag Glitch is probably one of the harder ones, because you don't really have any units that can hit two targets or have only AoE at this point, I would assume, unless you've been pulling a lot. Or they were like good banners, like Tomarine's probably the best healer for this, even if her combat readiness push is negated. Uh, because when she's in idle form, she does heal, give attack up, and her attack is double. It is AoE and it has a strip for his attack buff. Um, DPS-wise, Spectre Tenebrio when her S3 is on cooldown hits two targets, so that's fine. Ross is probably your best tank if you don't have Cecilia. And then Mercedes is your best DPS if you can get her. Eventually you'll get, um, Kana for free, and if you get the Bloodstone artifact, Kana basically replaces your healer, and you can go triple DPS. You can stack as many debuffs as you want in this fight. The main thing is you gotta hit AoE or two targets, at least. And you gotta make sure you, like, every time before he has threes, you gotta make sure you pop the, the crystal with him. You get the, the the buff that protects you from his poison. Brutal Ferris, um, like, just looking at the boss, you think it'd be really easy. Because, oh, he's the same type as Fiverr, and he's, he's weak to ice. Uh, except he also cannot have more than three debuffs at once, or he'll just... Reverse Uno card you and debuff your entire team. So like Furious is actually kind of bad here because of his burns. Um, Sigrid is kind of bad here. Specialty change Ross would be great here. A normal Ross, not so much. He's just kind of placeholder. Tama is by far the best healer in this one. Um, there's definitely other comps like Montmo is a good healer here. Angelica's here. Even Elena without any thing like on works out i i used like a doctor's bag elena when i was trying to make rima work in this one but yeah that's fine uh most dps's are kind of bad here like sermia is probably the best one i have because she only has unhealable but this boss ideally you should only use two debuffs defense break and speed down which you don't really have from everyone like even Iceria has a bad type matchup and as unbuffable so it's overstacks like free spirit Tyrius might might be the best one because it's attack down defense break um yeah for the most part any ice tank will be fine like rose is optimal if you're using like terran or terran or guard comps are pretty good alexa with skills off is pretty good Karin with the uh, S1 extra equip that gives her 15%. CR on hit is good. Uh, Kisei has one, I think. And then, of course, if you finish Commander Lorena specialty chain, she makes she's very easy to use for this and very passable. 
because there's a phase where he debuffs everyone, you're all silenced, and then combat readiness pushes are multiplied by like five. So Commander Lorena's S1 just instantly fills the bar every time, and she hits six times to get you out of that phase for free. And then this one's probably the easiest because you could legit just use Furious, Tama, Ross, like, or like a tank of your choice. Like Clary is probably the best one. And then um, like Sermia. Any, like having one or two people on debuffs is fun, like not a big deal. Asaria is here too. Asaria is good for this one. Laika is good for it if you got Laika. Um, his whole thing is he lowers your cool, like the cannon will lower your cooldowns. I believe it was the cannon at least, yeah. So you need like a hundred effect resist. Um, but you could CC the cannon, you could debuff all you want, strip, stuff like that. But yeah, the big thing about expeditions is, um, there's three levels. Level three is the one I made the videos on. They're the highest rewards. Um, this is where you get reforged materials, which you can turn any 85 gear you get as drops or loot for the most part, because there's like special event 85s that you can't touch and 88s are not modified and such. So it bumps up your gear to 90. Um, each boss has, um, a specific like hunt boss it corresponds to. So they affect those sets. And then of course you have like this monthly pass to fill out. I would buy the premium one uh, if you finish it normally, because it is definitely worth it. Like, these are specifically made for, like, the ones you can craft using these boxes. And then, of course, Mola, and then extra golden transmits are always nice. And charms. Charms are always nice. Um, once you beat level 1 the first time, you go to level 2, and so on. Uh... The big thing is the mechanics change slightly, so the tuning might not work out. But for the most part, it's the same. And then it's like, you have to do a certain amount before you can make the expedition open to everyone. Which, honestly, I think is completely fair. Unless, like, you should just do that all the time. Unless you really trust your guildmates and your friends to clear it out for you. For the most part, I think you get so many in a month from how much hunting you do, that you might as well do it. Uh, I'll probably be checking in the pet later as I work on it. For now, I'm kind of coasting on pets because that's a lot of gold I don't want to invest right now. <laughs> uh, Guild-wise, I wish I could, like... I, I, I want to join another guild on my alt just to show what it could be like early. I mean, for the most part, it's the same outside of Guild War. I'll be recording my own Guild Wars eventually. To show what it's like it's like the the mid-level guilds and like some thought processes in in guild war and scouting maybe um yeah i covered i think everything the sets are pretty much the same gear wise i did end up changing my montmorency for the hunt just because the the gear rolled very nicely when i was like seeing how to get the tro uh, the trose set up or Crozet, sorry, Crozet's his ML counterpart. My Montmorency does have 200 <laughs> effect resist, so she completely negates Wyvern's pushback and strip. Um, and I still don't know what artifacts is actually best on her. I know at that point I don't need a defensive one. I think Magara's Magahara's Tome, the one I put on Amarin, is probably better on Montmo because it gives like big CR every time she S2s and S3s. But I just kept the PvP one on her. I have a prophetic candlestick, so anytime she gets hit, once like once every time she cycles, she can like lower her cooldowns. So I was like, oh, that's it's a funny thing to do in PvP of a healer. But using it for hunts. Yeah, for the most part, there's that. Um Maybe I'll I don't know. I don't think I need to record the abyss. Like this thing's been nerfed a bunch. Maybe if there's requests for it, I can show. For like these roll blocks for the most part but automaton tower kind of hit the same thing like i don't have the unit diversity to necessarily push some of these now that i'm on like level two and this goes up to like level five but you can always weaken automaton tower of stigma i believe of course keep hall of trials going labyrinth is honestly kind of a slog i forgot how annoying this was but at 60 you unlock 
the the capital which has all the loot not necessarily important on normal i mean most of these labyrinths you'll want to 100 percent at some point just for the rewards there is one thing i want to mention i did not mention before so all the three stars you get uh you do want to triple s them every single time even if you plan on selling them uh I, where is it i i want to say it's in here maybe it's in here there is a you do get rewarded every time you triple s a character so it should be in here then uh no no that's friendship here it is so every time you get a uh, character to triple s imprint you get bookmarks i believe they're all bookmarks so even if you're gonna sell your three stars make sure you stack them up until they're triple s and then you sell them i think this ends at like the eighth maybe tenth time you do it but that's still like almost an entire pity's worth of bookmarks alone um there are two in particular maybe yeah two in particular you want to keep an eye out for so one is there's one three star and one four star do i have them here or did i put them away so let's see um so for three stars you want to keep an eye on ether because ether is a three star that has a moonlight four star equivalent so if you ever end up getting a duplicate of those, I actually did not get one until our targeted summoning event for Moonlights. So I, I put all of my four star investment into getting Aethers and I got a bunch. You can invest the three stars into that four star one to maximize your transmit stone bonus. And then the same thing applies to... Do I have one? I don't think he's in here. There is a... Fire four star. Here, Corvus. You can be Corvus has a five star moonlight, uh, dark Corvus, as you guys can probably assume. And you just throw them all in. If you ever get a duplicate, this is like a free like two hundred something, three hundred something stones. And it's really easy to imprint Corvus as is. So, yeah, those are two big ones. Uh, I can't really think of anything else to discuss now. Hopefully that's a good check-in for week three. I mean, I, I think I covered everything. So at this point, it's take your own time with the story. Enjoy it. Uh, eventually you get Moonlight Theater. Enjoy the story. It's not skippable, but and it's really good. And then these Advent stories, I may I do make my own clear videos about them, but like, Man, I'm not even sure you should try at this point. Like, I don't I don't think I even have nine units to field on this account. <laughs> like, I'm pretty much running all the free gear, and then I'm, I'm dumping all my leaps to farm today. I don't think I have enough charms to do everything. Like, maybe by the end of the hunt challenge I'll have it, because that's three HP sets, three attack sets, and then whatever else is free. But yeah, for the most part, keep on going. If you have questions, I can try and answer them, but... Yeah, thank you for joining me. Have a good one.